A big problem with graphical applications is a lot of them are very hit and miss with the support of a keyboard only workflow. Now, obviously most people aren't really going to be affected by that, but if you're someone who does just want to work with only a keyboard, or for whatever reason you physically can't use a mouse, that does become a bit of a problem. Now, rather than modifying the application itself, what if we instead just emulated a mouse with our keyboard? Now, there are plenty of applications that do this that basically just turn your keyboard into a D-pad. The problem with these though is they're very slow and very clunky and just not very productive to work with. So today we're working with another application called KeyNav. This basically splits your screen into four quadrants and then as you select the direction it will show you another four set of quadrants to further cut down where you want to move your mouse. Now you will notice in this video after doing a cut, sometimes the grid just won't appear. This isn't a problem with the application per se, it only happens when I'm running OBS. If I'm not running OBS, it's absolutely perfect. So it must be a problem with the way the OBS is capturing the screen. Now for the most part, I'm going to be working with the default binding. So to actually open up KeyNav once you're actually running it, what you do is press Control and then semicolon. So this is going to open up the grid itself. So from here we can go and press H, J, K, and L, and that's going to specify where we actually place the grid. So H is going to take us to the left, L is going to take us to the right, J is going to take us down, and K is going to take us up, as you would expect from working with Vim keys. So let's go and press K, and if I just spam W a bit, it should reopen the grid. You don't normally have to do that. What W actually does is just teleport your cursor to the center of the grid. Now, just moving your cursor wouldn't be very useful. We can also go and click on things as well. So the thing that we're going to click on is whatever is at the center of the grid. So let's say we want to go and right click on the OBS icon up in my status bar here. So I want to get this center onto that icon right there. So let's go to the right and up, and right, and up, and right, and up, and right, and right, and up, and up. And now we've actually got the cursor on that icon. So by default, if you press one, it's gonna be a left click, two, it's gonna be a middle click, and three, it's going to be a right click. So let's press three, and as we can see, now we've right clicked. Now obviously, that is far, far less efficient than just using your mouse, but if you were doing that with a D-pad style of movement, you'd have to do far, far more key presses. Now when you press one, two, or three, it's not actually going to cancel out of key nav. All it's going to do is do the key press action and then let you keep working. So there's a couple of different ways we can go and quit out of the application. So the first way is just pressing escape. If you press escape, it's going to cancel out and leave your cursor wherever it was located before. If you press W and then escape, it's going to teleport your cursor to the center of the grid and then obviously escape will close the application. But if you want to go and teleport to the center, quit out of the application and also click, you can press space. However, sometimes you may not actually want to cancel the grid. Sometimes you may just want to go and undo some actions and then move to an earlier state. So every time you press A, it will undo one action. Now, even things like teleports are considered an action. So if you do use any teleports, it may not resize the grid each time. But sometimes undoing actions isn't actually going to be the easiest way to move your grid around. Sometimes you just want to move the entire grid as it is. So let's say we have a grid that looks a little something like this. If I go and press capital J, this will move the entire grid down by the height of the grid, but it won't actually change the size of the grid, and I can move this around as much as I want, and if I have multiple screens like I do, I can actually move the grid onto a different screen while keeping the grid the exact same size. Now, by default, we're working with a 2x2 two two grid, and we have four directions to move in. These map together perfectly well, but we don't actually need to use a 2x2 two two grid. We can go and have, say, 3x7 or 10x5. And when you're doing a grid like that, it actually makes far more sense to go and enable grid nav. Now, when I start up key nav by pressing control semicolon, it will enable the grid nav functionality, and we're going to be working with a 4x4 four four grid. So let's go and have a look at how that actually looks. Now, if you've ever used something like, say, Qt or Vimium or Vim Vixen, this probably looks very familiar because this is how it was going about selecting links. 
Let's go and redo the example from earlier about trying to click the OBS icon in my status bar. So right now, the OBS icon is in segment AD. So to actually go into that segment and reset the grid there, all we do is press AD. And as we can see, the grid is now spawning in that segment. Right now, the OBS icon is in AC. So once again, let's go and press that. And from here, it's kind of hard to tell where the OBS icon actually is because the application doesn't try and make it easy to actually read when you have grid nav on. It's just going to dump the letters into it and whatever happens sort of happens. So right now, I know that AA or BA are going to do what we need to do. So let's go and press AA and teleport to that location. As we can see, that's going to work perfectly fine. Press 3, and then that does a right click. One thing I do want to note is about multiple monitors. So it doesn't matter how many you have. You can have, I don't know, 10 monitors. No matter what you do, it will always open up KeyNav's grid on a single monitor. It's not going to try to stretch it out across all your monitors. And the monitor it's going to open up the grid on is whichever one the cursor is currently located on. So if I say open up the grid on my second monitor, this doesn't mean that we're stuck as we established earlier. If I go and press shift and then say L in this case, it's going to go and move the entire grid onto the monitor I want it to be on. And if I want it on my third monitor, I could then go and move it again, and now it's over there. Now, generally, you're not going to be using this on an empty desktop. So let's say I have two terminal windows here, and I'm currently focused on this one on the left here. So if I go and open up KeyNav, and then I go and press T, it's actually going to go and focus the grid just on the focused window, which in a lot of cases is going to severely cut down on the number of key presses I need to make. If you have your cursor in a location you need it to be in and you close out of key nav, you actually can get the grid back to that location very easily. So let's say I want it on my OBS icon right here. If I go and press C, it's going to go and cut the grid around that location. Now, in this case, because where my cursor was would have cut the grid above the screen, it goes and moves it down the minimum amount it needs to move it. So let's go back to the location. And if I go and press up, and I go and press up, and now we're back to where we were with far less movement. Now, while it is possible to go and save a really long binding, sometimes you want to go and make something on the fly, and that's where making macros comes into play. So macros work in basically the same way they do in Vim. We have a sequence of key presses, and then when you rerun the macro, it will just repeat all of those presses. So making a macro is very simple. All we need to do is go and press Q, and then from there, the key we want to assign the macro to. So in this case, I'm going to assign it to R. And let's say we want to go here, 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 here. And let's say I want to add in a, I don't know, a right click and a left click and a middle click for whatever reason. And if we go and press Q again, that will then end the macro sequence. And now the macro has been saved. So let's go and quit out of key nav. And then to rerun a macro, what we need to do is press shift at and then the macro key we assigned. So in this case, it's R and we go back to that spot and repeat all of the key presses. Now, by default, scrolling isn't enabled, but it's very easy to go and add. So basically all I've done is inside of the config file, we've got one, click one, two, click two, three, click three. So those are the default bindings. When I press key one, it will do a click one. And along with that, we also have a click four and a click five. And just to keep them in line with the default bindings, I've assigned them to four and five as well. So now we can basically just scroll up and down. Scrolling is very hit and miss in where it actually works. In GUI applications, it works perfectly fine because it's just basically running a scroll up and scroll down with your mouse. But in terminal applications, it sort of depends on how the application was written, whether it will actually support those functionality. But generally, a terminal application already has keyboard support anyway. As I've sort of touched on throughout this video, configuring the application is very, very simple. So on the left-hand side, we have the key, or I guess the key sequence we want to press to actually execute an action. And then after that, we have the action. So in this case, Shift H will do a move left. And if you want to have multiple actions happening on one key press, all we need to do is include a comma. So let's say we want to do a move left and a cut dash left as well. If I go and press shift H now, it will do a move left and a cut left. And now it's over on my second screen. So if I move it back, as you can see, it's done a cut left. Now the order of the commands is very important. Just like when you're making a macro, 
if you have a cut left and then a cut right, that's going to be different from a cut right and then a cut left. Now the documentation for this application does do a very good job at explaining what every single one of the actions actually does. So if you want to go and add some extra ones in there that weren't in there by default, it's very, very simple to go and see that. It tells you exactly what they're called, what values they take in, and gives you a brief description of basically what it does. I believe in the default config, basically everything in here is being used, but there's a couple of things that are missing. For example, like cell select, we can go and assign a key to each cell rather than relying on grid nav where it just assigns it itself. Now, while you can go and do very precise movement with this, if you want to go and press the keys a ton of times, you don't actually need to do so. So one of the reasons why key nav is set up the way it is, is because most of the time you don't need pixel perfect accuracy when you're moving your cursor around. So for example, let's say I wanted to select on the OBS icon right here. This icon isn't just a pixel wide. Wide, so you actually have a lot of buffer space where you can be slightly inaccurate and still select the thing you want to select. And a lot of GUI applications have much bigger icons than this. Like for example, I don't know, the Olive Video Editor. Yeah, we're going to just use that. So if you want to go and select this OK button right here, this OK button is quite a large button and you actually have a lot of leeway you can work with if you do want to select it. Basically, the application dev decided that sacrificing some level of accuracy for much, much more speed was going to be a really good trade. And personally, I am very much in agreement. Now, one thing to note is if you're not using X11 and you're using Wayland, you won't actually be able to use this. It is very much dependent on X11. One day there may be an application that does the same thing on Wayland, but this application isn't that. Honestly, I think this is a really cool application. And even though I have no interest in getting rid of my mouse, if you are someone who does want to do that, this might be kind of worth checking out. Now, I'm not the fastest at working with it, but if you are basically using this every single day, I feel like you could get really, really quick with KeyNav, maybe even quicker than a lot of people use their mouse. Even though it's not going to work in things like games, in that case you might want to use something that's more D-pad-like, but for general desktop usage, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use KeyNav. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monster, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, uh, Peter D, Stephen, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe to our LibrePay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.